So here, let's start with the CoShare plugin. So again, what is a what is a plugin and what is a jQuery plugin? All right, guys, now I'm, I'm talking about And especially if you're talking about Pokemon Go. <laughs> what is a plugin? Feature to software. OK, what is the difference between a, a plugin and an API? In a sense, but not exactly. The, the answer is that uh, my second. API uses more of a code. That's exactly it. Um, the difference would be, in my view, and I think it's, I, I think most people would agree, a plugin is a code that is more. You still have to integrate it, but it's more, um, more modulated and more encapsulated. Whereas uh, API is, you have to actually work with a programming interface and strictly coding. Right, and so a jQuery plugin is a plugin that is written in jQuery, and um, as long as you know a little bit of jQuery, the instructions generally are very simple, so you can integrate it in your site and get certain functionality. As we have talked, it's very common to use a um, like a image gallery a plugin, validation plugins. Um, the plugins decorate forms since forms are not fun to, to decorate. And then there are many, many other ones too, but this one is a social share jQuery plugin. And so this is what it does. It's the social buttons and um, let's see. And it has a demo. So the first point is that when you're looking at a plugin, the website should give you some idea already whether it's any good. If you can't figure out from the instructions, then probably don't go there because you have to follow their instructions. It's someone who wrote the code for free and they're sharing it for free, so there are no guarantees. Um, one way to, you know, obviously you can research for your own um, jQuery plugin, that's what I want to do. One way to find a, a plugins would be to search the jQuery plugin registry. And so, as you can see here, there are some popular categories, and I'm just going to pick on something the magnifique and what i want to show you is that the jquery plugins that are listed in the registry they have watchers and forks and if something is watched by three thousand people and forked 500 times that's probably a pretty good indication that it's okay do you know what the fork means yeah, okay sam uh, so when you get on github you can go search somebody's profile such as images loaded that's actually one i've used um and if you have GitHub, you can do it from the command line too, but you just basically you fork it, which is it downloads everything for you into a <coughs> essentially. It, it downloads everything for you, and now from there on, you can start from that, their existing code base, but then you can make it into something different, right? So your fork from the tree is a different path. It starts from a common set, but then, it, it, then when, the, when you fork it, then you can customize it, the code in your own way, and do whatever you want with it. Okay. Well, no, you, it's the source code. You have to download it, right? What so it's a repository. Point the point of GitHub is that it's a code repository so that you can put your own code up there to store, or more powerful, you can collaborate with other people because it turns out that uh, keeping track of the versions of software and then integrating software into one project is not trivial. So GitHub is the tool for you to use for this. And if you guys are taking web, uh, just, I think maybe the second ITC 250 class, Bill uses GitHub. So you should definitely have exposure to GitHub. Right, so they do have web, they have static websites, I guess, that I haven't actually put this together, but generally the idea is that you want it so you can store your code more than anything else. If we have time, maybe we can look at it in more detail. 
Okay, so this is the cool social share plugin, and is a, is a, it looks like it might be a good site. So it has a demo here. So that's encouraging. And if I look at the demo, this is what it does. It's going to set up these buttons, and then when you click on it, once you're logged in, it will post a link. So let's see how this works. And the process is pretty much generic. You have to follow the instructions, but generally what you're going to have to do is you have to download the source code for the plugin, integrate it into a, your project or your website, and then um, it's pretty much assumed if it's a jQuery plugin, you're going to have to include the jQuery library or maybe the jQuery UI, right? So as much as you hate them, social sharing buttons are necessary. And so this is how it works. It supports the following networks. And here is how you'd use it. So these are the steps you need to follow. First, you need to download the zip file from the beginning of the article, extract the files. So let's go ahead and follow these steps together and see if everyone gets this working. So the first step is to use the plugin, download the zip file from the button at the beginning of the article, which is right here. There should be just a download button. Uh, I don't think there is a version here. I'm not sure where you're looking, Chris. Oh, no, I'm uh, <laughs> going back to cool social share. This is the one I'm going to do in class. I just wanted to show you the repository. So um, the link to cool share plugin is from week seven module. Okay. And so download and download, I'll download it on the desktop. And uh, here it is. So extract the files. Okay, and here are the assets and an index.html. So this was step one. And this step is generally going to be true for any plugin. You do need to download the code to use it, right? And then after you have done this, extract all the files and copy the folder assets cool share to your project. So let's, um, the other thing is that this already has an index.html and we're just going to use this as our project. Does this make sense? Right? So this will be our project file. You need to include the style sheet and the JavaScript file on the plugin along with the font awesome on your page. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the sample index.html that comes with a plugin, or you could create your own, right? But we're just going to use this one that is available here. And actually what I'll do is um, I'm going to set the project folder from brackets and then open it. So cool share folder, select this is the project folder. So I set my project to co cool share and then the, the folder should automatically show up in brackets as they always do, right? Cool share is the name of the cool No, it's just when you unzip it, that's where it puts it. All right, well, then put it in a folder, cool share. I don't know why I do that, but just name your folder something, and then in, however you do it, you need to have a folder, and inside the folder, you need to have the assets and the index.html, right? And then set up your project to the cool share in my case. Do you want me to look? Or? Well, 
That's what they don't get. Okay. Um, Right. So, okay. So then, just create your folder for co-share, and then put the assets in index.html in it. I don't know why I did this. Went off on it. Now, the next step for us is to include the following files in the head of the HTML file. So this file is using the bootstrap font awesome. That's fine. And it also needs to use the cool share CSS and the cool share plugin.js, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the HTML file that comes with it. And it already has those included here. So here is the bootstrap, here is the plugin, and the styles. And the JS is at the, so they have decided to put the JS script at the end of the page. And as you can see, if you scroll down, there is the jQuery, which you have to include, otherwise your plugin will not work. Well, if you put it on the bottom, it gives appearance of loading faster, and it's going to be sure that all the elements on the page loaded before it gets to the JavaScript. And then the plugin source, and then they have also separated the code for the, the source code in a demo.js, right? Are we okay so far? All right. Next, the plugin depends on jQuery, so you be sure to include it before the plugin.js and any recent version we will do. And as you, we can see here, the jQuery library is included before the plugin li library, okay? So the plugin.js is the file that contains the code that does the, the magic of essentially putting up the buttons on Facebook. And then reading through the instructions, next you need to call the plugin of an element that will be converted to a set of social buttons. And they are going to, they're saying here, let's use a spin element to do this. And as we have been doing all along, the requirement is that the element you select has to have a class of social share because we're going to select it with a class, right? And so if we look at the example here, There is a span with a class of social share, and this is where the buttons will be inserted on the page, right? And then the class name is arbitrary, um, so you can name this, you know, summer quarter, it doesn't matter, but as long as you use the right class name to call it from JavaScript, it's fine. Social, queer, uh, social share seems like a good name. And then after that, we are ready to initialize the plugin. So the plugin is going to be, here is the line, the magic line of code. Um, it's going to be in the demo.js folder, right? So we're calling an anonymous function here, the, uh, sorry, the ready function. And then the line that actually calls the plugin is dollar sign dot social share, which is calling what? The class, right, with the span the spin with the class of social share. And then you apply the share buttons method from the plugin code. And it also has a couple options. This option is going to be the website that is going to be shared. So if you have your own website, your website is going to go here. Right? And then um, for Twitter, it has some options. Uh, and for Facebook and Google, it's just going to post without any additional options. Um, check out this test. So this is where you can customize it. Check out my awesome, my awesome website via Sunny Nerd. 
And so you can also share to Pinterest and Tumblr, which requires some additional code options, and they are for now commented out. Okay, so if we go here, we can test this right now. Okay, so this is the website. All the the back image and the font and everything else, this is just the way the demo page was um, created by the person who wrote the plugin, right? Your, your, your page can look in any way. It's not really relevant here. The only thing you have to have for sure is an element with a class of social share, such as the span. And so if you click here, now it's going to show the three enabled social media networks. And then if you say um, the Facebook one, the user has to be logged in. And then once you're in, then I can say testing social media plugins. And it's going to post it to my um, jQuery, I guess I should say here. And then if you say post to Facebook, then it's posting. So that's what this plugin does, right? And of course, this website can be your website on your server and not just the local. So let's take a look at Facebook. You have to log in to Facebook, right? So let's see what it shared. Block. Okay, so it's sharing the... I thought I set it up to my website in the source code, right? So let's see where it's getting this from. Oh, I didn't. I don't know what I did here. Um, We changed in the JavaScript file to the, but where we need to change it is actually also up in the, in here. No, I don't think that's why. Um, it's just picking up the website, so it's linking the website. Um, and let's see where it's getting this from. Uh, I thought it's getting it from the JavaScript. Right here. Maybe I didn't save it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Let's try this again. So go ahead and you can try it if you hopefully you're working along here, not just watching me, but let's try this again. Right. Okay, so I'll take a look. So the, I, I guess I had not saved it. Take two. I didn't, it looks like I hadn't saved properly the, I didn't save the JavaScript before we did this. So now, let's see here. Okay, so take two, and this is from, now it shared my website because I put in the JavaScript, uh, you know, my website, right? So that's the idea. And I see here that this image is, too small, but that's a different method. Okay. All right. Right. So do you have anyone anyone need any help? Or? Or just solve my you just solve yeah, the problem. Yeah, right? yeah, no, I was wondering so in my works file, where is it pulling the image from? I just see that here in this file, so it's just there is where in this it's probably from the CSS, so it's somewhere in the plugin code. So let's take a look. That's a good question. Let's see. Well, 
I haven't looked how this is implemented. You know, part of the reason I like it is because I don't have to know how it works and I just get to use it in this case. But um, let's see here. So here is some share URL. So I guess it's pull, uh, pulling them somewhere from the call. I mean, there is no other place, right? Um, somewhere here, there must be some links to the buttons or in the CSS. So I think it's getting it from here, Chris, and everyone else right there in the JavaScript. The share URLs, I bet, is what they are, because they're standard buttons. So probably it's... Yeah, that's what I think. There is no other explanation. It's got to be somewhere online. So it's probably coming from the JS. And also, apparently, the plugin is uh, responsive. So if you put this on your phone, which is nice, a lot of these plugins are very cool, but they're not mobile friendly. So as you can see, according to this website, they are mobile friendly as well. So how do we know which script is plugins? You always have to put, that's a great question. You always have to put first the jQuery because the all the plugins are going to depend on the jQuery library. So you have to put this one before the plugin itself. Always. Multiple jQueries, but you should only have one jQuery library link. Yeah, for the final part. Yeah, for the multiple plugins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if you have multiple plugins? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you can. I bet all of them are going to require jQuery to be before the plugins. Yeah, and then the plugins. So as long as jQuery is before, you'll be okay. Sometimes some of the plugin might require also jQuery UI. So if it does, then you need to just add jQuery UI. jQuery UI goes after jQuery, right? Goes after that, jQuery. Yeah, so jQuery is the library, jQuery UI, and jQuery mobile live on top of jQuery. Great. So um, maybe a couple more minutes on this if you guys want to. So yeah, Chris, I think that it's constructing them with the URLs, with the, it's picking up the little images for the different social media sites. Yeah, that explains the buttons that actually links to the site, the web the little button with the arrow that pulls the links to the Let's, let's look at the code. Should I, I cover this already, but should I have my um, JavaScript broken up per page as the meeting gone? That's what I have it all on one page. Well, it, I think it just depends what works for your project. Right? So if you only have JavaScript on one page, then you don't get it on one page, otherwise. Well, I mean, JavaScript's a few things like the background in the JavaScript. Okay. But are you on different pages? Or the same page? In, in, uh, well, they're all the same background. Oh, I see. We have to include this on the different pages. Right. Well, I'm saying that I'm having I'm having a couple issues on my code and I'm backing. Using code, the plugin code, and code I've written. Yeah. I think I don't know where it's conflicting that though. So I'm trying to put my code in there. It's not self-referencing code for the whole site, and that's why I don't know if I should like for that page when I'm trying to use that. If I have to switch different backgrounds, a little different. 
Okay, Chris, when you figure out that where this button is coming from, let us know. Again, I feel like when I use a plugin, I'm happy not to know the details because yeah. I have too much stuff I have to think about. Do you guys like what I actually want to go and it's like you want to be able to press that or the button in a specific place in the Well, I think that if you give it the class, as long as you give the class name to the element that you want this to appear, yeah, then it's going to take care of it. Right. You can put it in a div or any other element. So as long as it has the class social share, it should work. Right. Then there's some more code if you want to have Pinterest to Okay. So this was our plugin demo and uh, the process is again always you have to include jQuery always you always have to download their file which is going to be a zip file and it's going to contain probably a JS and a CSS file and then look at any additional directions sometimes they'll tell you what kind of element you need to have or just they'll say pick any element and give it a class name so you can call you can call our method um, as in this case and also do you um when you look at line 16 hopefully this also reminds you what we did last week with the accordion and uh, tabs you is the same idea you select a class and then you call the method right so i, I think we'll leave it to that for, for the plugins you guys all right so pick something interesting and fun for the project <clears throat> All right, let's talk about Jason. All right, so Tuesday, usually the last day of the call, the class before the final is going to be open lab. So we have a class, but no lecture. So you can come and work or work on whatever you need to work on on Tuesday, yeah, the 16th, I guess. Well, no, it's not just homework seven. It's going to be more. Uh, it's going to integrate homework six and seven, and then put it together and uh, clean it up. Yeah, so you can make any changes for your final. You can just <laughs> essentially copy and paste, but you probably want to do some cleanup of the final. So yeah, like I didn't want all this. Exactly. Right. Okay. Okay, so the question. Question? Veronica? Yeah, so that should be on the calendar and it's scheduled for the 18th of, of next Thursday, right? Going into that one, Jay, or did someone look at I'm pretty sure. We are looking at So next Thursday, we'll start it. 4.30 and we'll go for as long as we need to go. We have a pretty big class, but maybe we even get out of here a bit early. Okay. So same class, same time, next Thursday? 4.30, yeah. So the evening classes are the usual, the same time. I know there is change with the daytime classes, but not with the evening classes. But can we start on Tuesday? Can we start on Tuesday? You want to do it on Tuesday? I'm just saying it comes out. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, that's fine. I don't know if I am. Sure. I if anybody wants to go on Thursday, just let me know. That's fine. Okay, that, that is. Otherwise, Thursday is open lab. No, this is coming Thursday? I mean, Tuesday. Yes. Tuesday. Correct. Okay, so AJAX um, stands for asynchronous and XML. XML. Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It's not a new technology or even a technology of it's, it, it's essentially a group of technologies that exist. And it's asynchronous, which means that that's, I guess, the key, the interesting part here. You know how when you use Google Maps, when you change location, you get the new map without having to reload the page? 
So that's called asynchronous. And that's what we're going to um, talk about. And then I, Ajax works with JavaScript and JavaScript. And even though XML is in the title, it also works with HTML, XML, and JSON. And arguably, JSON might be the best way to go. So we're going to do the example with JSON, but just so you're aware, you can use the Ajax technology also with HTML or XML. I know you are familiar with XML. Could you tell the rest of the group in case other students haven't used it? <laughs> XML? Um, it's kind of a, you call it a scripting language? It's a markup language. Just markup language. Scripting. Well, it's um, encompass, you have a, a opening tag and a closing tag, just like, um, you know, like the HTML tags. And then um, they'll be named the same, and then it runs whatever's in between those tags. Right. And why do you know about this? Um, oh, because it's used in uh, Android development. So in Android development, the assets are stored in, uh, in XML format. All right. I guess the only addition, uh, and thank you, Marcus, um, is that the, with, the H, with XML, you can name the tags whatever you want. You, you don't have to stick with a name set defined by the language, but if you need to have custom names, you can name your tags accordingly. And then JSON stands for? JavaScript object. OK. And this is a format for storing data in key value pairs. So, so um, AJAX is going to let us do what? Request data from the server, load it without refreshing the page. And so to accomplish this, it uses the asynchronous processing model. In other words, the users, you know, are not stuck there waiting for it to load, but they can do something else on the page. So that's quite nice. So the, the way this works is that the browser is going to request information from the server. The server is going to respond with data in a HTML, XML, or JSON format. And then the browser is going to process the response and render it on the page. So that's the process. There's just a lot of details. So behind all this, um, what we have is the XML HTTP request object. And we're going to look at it in detail. And this is what is used to implement AJAX functionality. So you can create a new instance. It's, um, it's an object. So you should be familiar with the notation. There you know, variable with a certain name is equal to a new. XML HTTP request, and now you create a new instance of the object. And once you have created a new instance of an object, you can use its properties and methods the same way as the date object and the other objects we have, the ones we created ourselves as well, right? So in this case, um, we're using the open method, and the open method gets three parameters, three arguments. Get is going to tell whether you are going to use get or post. So get is um, the method you want to use if you want your data to be bookmarked. Post is the method you use if you want your data to be secure, more secure anyway. This is the name of the file that is going to contain the JSON object. And then the last argument is going to tell whether true or false, asynchronous or synchronous. And we want it asynchronous, so we're going to say true. Okay. Okay, so again, the file to be loaded, and then asynchronous or not, two is asynchronous. And you can also pass some additional parameters. So for example, you can say, when you're sending out, you can say, here is a search, I want you to search for string X, right? And then you're going to get back a response, including your search results. Taking the time here. I guess I'll go over a couple more slides and I'll take a break. All right. And so then when the server has responded, the event is going to call an anonymous function to process on the client side what's going on, on, on load. When you get the response, uh, the first thing you want to check is um, there are several possible values that the server can re re return. So you all have seen 404, for example. If the response is 404, would we want to go on? We can't actually, but yeah, we, we want to check that. And so if we get 
200 is the response, it means we are okay. So if the response is 200, then we are going to process the response, right? And of course, IE had their own version of all this. Um, so it had a different, um, I actually think I took out the slides, so I don't spend any time, but I had their own implementation of the same functionality. Um, I'm not going to talk about it. Right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So this was a brief overview of what, you know, the process flow. And let's take a 10 minute break and we'll talk about the data formats and their pros and cons. <laughs> I like you thinking, yeah, they are like fragments. I never thought about it anymore. Yeah, so Sam also is, Sam took the Android class, I guess it's not, so, yeah. It was very dry, and the only update we heard is the classic Android version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think three widgets and one plugin. Well, then, whatever it says on there, that's what okay. it is. I can I can look it up for you, but you can look it up. As well. I think it was three three widgets and. Plugin. Yeah. And then some additional, no. some other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The widget is the one that yeah. we did last year. Yeah, like yeah. the accordion or the tab. Uh, so look at the, those Android studios. Yeah. Are you guys all this? All right. But anything that I find that. Um, okay, let me step out for a second. Oh, I know Android and if I like it, then it, 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 it's radical. Yeah, you can add on to this one. So it looks like it is yeah, yeah. the you are regions. And uh, uh, because you know, you're not you're going to get right now. Android, there's all these yeah, different things that come together. Put in, 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 put the best thing to do is find a tutorial that was like, yeah. you know, we were working with. Um, so, for instance, like, you know, it's like you have an app yeah. on your phone or whatever. Yeah. Like, well, let's say, the grammar is like iTunes. So, yeah. so, it's like, I'm playing music, now I get a phone call, so it did, it mutes the music, or so it yeah. fades it down, it fades it back up. That's built into the app, so the phone call comes up, I forget what that's called. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's right. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Right. Yeah. 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 You had a hard time with Freddy? I remember that. I, like, I, just, I remember <laughs> the analogy. So <laughs> you in the background. Uh, geolocation. Right now we're working on the RSS. Okay. And like. Uh, Six times so square, and this is on iMac. You click on it, it brings you to a, um, a list page that has each of us, you know, like each um, different uh, RSS articles from the category that you to come to. Then when you go to that, then it takes you straight to the web page. We were thinking about parsing it out and then putting it on a, you know, the home page, like. Taking the RSS information from the web page. Yeah. Takes too much time trying to figure out the whole parsing. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, this one. I haven't even tried. This is a work for So, I haven't even tried. Do you like something? Oh, okay. So, 
You ever, um, you can do that. I'll tell you about the last one. Yeah. She's really, she's really, she's really, she's really, she's really, she's really, I have the whole six, seven, uh, eight, 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 eight. It's all one site. Can I just for the assignment six and seven just give a link to the index page of that site for each of those? Yeah. And if everything's in external Java, uh, uh, JavaScript machine. And, uh, yeah. Yes. So I'll just submit the same URL for both assignments. Just make a note so I know what's going on, so I don't have to look for it. That's what. Okay. The difficulty is if I have to look for it. Well, and, and in the JavaScript, in the, in the script uh, file, everything's documented. You know, it says, okay, well, this is on this page, and this is on this page, and this is what these two things are doing. As long as I can figure it out, it's easy. Yeah. You can maybe add a comment, submission comment as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, you guys are talking about books. This is the one on the network. I mean, sci-fi genre. Very strong writers. I have to read the Teddy Butler that came out of here. Oh, yeah. He read it uh, to Robert J. Sawyer. He read it. Let's see, what is this book called? Quantum. What was the name? It's about this guy who um, who gets um, a brain injury, and so he gets a clone of himself, and he uses quantum fog to trans to do the mind to transfer himself. So uh, this is because everyone knows our quantum science works for us. Okay. <laughs> that's not just saying. That's not like Roger's last name. Yeah, but um. Oh, we should start the yeah, book club. Book club yes. <laughs> so before we get back to Jason, I I just listened to this book on Algo and I want to recommend it to you guys. It's called Algorithms to Live By. It's very interesting. These guys um, got together and they determined essentially what computer science algorithms uh, rule in our everyday lives. So, for example, dating. Uh, looking for an apartment, sorting obviously. Um, and, uh, how long should you explore, should you explore or exploit? Right? When when do you stop exploring? And uh, so, for example, with the dating and apartment seeking, which is apparently the same algorithm, 37 percent you search for 37 percent of your sample, and then after that, the first person or apartment you encounter that is um, meets your criteria. Then you should just take it. The science says you should just take the next one after 37%. The algorithm changed with like online dating and all that stuff. So this was written, let's say, 20 years ago. No, this is in 2016. It just came out. It's okay, really so, fun. So I think you really like it. So they wrote in 1996, then wrote the same algorithm. Maybe it's a different algorithm. Because it changes. Yeah. My parents, they met on that show. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, so it's really fun and I recommend it. Um, okay. And it's a yeah, Okay, maybe send me a link or something. Okay, send me a link. This I'm so fascinated with chaos theory and you know indeterminism. Um, in fact, towards the end of this book, he talks about um, the use, you know, the use of randomness and also probabilistic algorithms and stuff like that. Uh, based here. On, yeah, I'll have to do that. Let me make my next book. Okay, guys, um, I guess we should. Uh,
Yeah. As fun as all these conversations are, I guess we should get back to JSON. All right. So what data formats are supported by? But yes, and don't forget to message me, please. Um, there are three data, the, the formats that are supported by AJAX and um, that you can work with are HTML, um, XML, and JSON, as we mentioned. So if you use HTML, that's pretty simple because one of the tedious parts with AJAX is that if you get it back as a JSON object, you then have to convert it to, X, to HTML. So that's pretty tedious. But if you use HTML, then you're good. You don't have to make any trans uh, translation, if you will. So this would be one example. And then how would you get it? Well, the XHR, so the X XML HTTP request object I showed you earlier, has a response text property, and you can get the response through this object and store it with a element in the HTML. So that's pretty um, easy to do and no extra work required. Um, you can only do this on the same server. So that's a big, you know, you can't do cross server data if you're using the HTML. So that's a bit of a concern. The other concern is we're using the HTML. So you always have to be careful about as we have discussed some security considerations within the HTML, you can pass in tags. So easier, but perhaps not ideal. XML, the XML format, you have to translate it to HTML once you receive it from the server. And also XML is a bit of a bulky language, so it's verbose. If you, if you want to work with XML, you would call the response XML property instead. And then you're going to store your response in a variable as object. And then you'd have to convert the XML to HTML, which is tedious, right? You have to do it, yes, I'll show you. Uh, it's a little bit like when we work to JavaScript and you have to construct an entire, you know, the tags and all the tags have to be in place. So the last option here, the data format is the JSON format. And JSON is going to come in as text. You can send JavaScript over the from the server. So it's going to come in as text and then get converted to a JavaScript object. But this is what JSON looks like. It's just that it's not really an object. And JSON comes in uh, key value pairs. So it's always going to be a, the key and its value is the same way as. Um, When they come in from the data storage, they're going to be text, and then when they get to the to your page, it's going to get converted to JavaScript, so you can work with it as JavaScript. As right? It's going to be a JavaScript object. Right. <coughs> As you can see here, you can even store images. And also, uh, you can nest them. So it's pretty powerful. The problem is that the syntax is very um, finicky. So if you miss a comma, for example, then works. it's going to collapse. Right. And note here the syntax. You have commas here, but not a comma after the last one. To get the JSON, you're also going to use the response text property of the object. And then you have to use the JavaScript to convert uh, JSON to HTML before you can display it on the page. Here are the key value pairs. Uh, when I talk about key value, uh, Sean? Um, do I still go through the same process of checking for errors? Yeah, so that's another part of the process. You have to check for errors, and you'll be doing on all, all this only if there are no errors. But if I get an error there, will it, will it, if I go through an editor, will it tell me that this is where my error is at? Or is that just something I gotta have now? Yeah, okay, so that's a good question. Um, so actually, we can't even test the JSON, it has to have a server. So with our brackets here, we will not be able to test it. I was going to suggest to you to upload it to Edison 
or we can look at the example from the book online, but it actually has to have a like a LAMP server or some kind of server so it can work. And then with that come the issue that you can't look at the errors actually, right? Because with PHP, you can't look at the source code to see the errors. So that was a good question. Um, are you familiar with key value pairs then? This, this is, okay. So for example, here, if you have a band touring, then you have many locations, many dates, many maps, and you can store these in a, a JSON object, right? This is just one of them. And you can have these values be strings, numbers, booleans, objects, and even you can nest object within object within object. So here is an object. Again, it's going to come as text, but then you're going to convert it to an object. You have an events object here. And as you can see, it has multiple key value pairs for the data. Right? So it's, again, we're learning that JSON is the Java, it's a data storage uh, format. And you can work with JSON, by the way, not just with JavaScript. Uh, you can work with with Android and pretty much, I guess, a lot of languages have so APIs. Database, right? I'm sorry? Database. It's not a database, but I guess MongoDB, I think I was telling you that. Yeah. So apparently MongoDB does um, work with JSON objects. Oh, okay. Steve Congo was just investigating that and he just told me about it. Okay, so um, there, there are methods to convert back and forth between string and JavaScript. And to convert JavaScript object to a string, we use the method cleverly named stringify. Or to convert the string to JavaScript, you're going to use parse. So when we're getting the JSON from the server, we're going to use parse to convert it to JavaScript. All right, so all, everything I described so far works only on the same server. To work with a different server, you have to use uh, JSONP. And what essentially this means is that it's like a workaround where you're going to put your code inside a script tag, and this allows you to work with a different server. Okay. Otherwise, you have to get the data. The JSON data has to be stored on the same server as your the rest of the files. And thankfully, um, there is also an easier version to work with uh, JSON, which is through jQuery. So again, jQuery library has added some methods that are easier to work with. Although at the end of the day, it's also XML HTTP request object, but just easier to use. And so some of the jQuery methods that work with Ajax include load, get, post, get JSON, get script, or Ajax. The load is going to return the content um, into the, of the jQuery into the jQuery selection rather. So you're going to load this content into an element. So this is the element itself. There, the URL of the file to load. So again, we looked at this already before, right? Remember, um, and then the fragment of the page to show. So you just want to pay to show this particular fragment. And then there is a jQuery version of the XML HTTP request object, jqxhr object, which again has map, maps the same functionality, easier to use on top of what I showed you with JavaScript. All right, okay, so do you have an idea in your head of the concepts here? Not quite. What, what, do you have an example of where these are used? Well, I have two examples. Let's see if we have time okay. to work through them. In fact, um, okay, so I have a JSON example with uh, Flickr, which is with uh, jQuery so it's easier and quicker 
And I suggest we start with this one because I know we can get it done. And then we'll reassess if we have time to call the other one by hand or just look at the example, okay? All right, so are you all familiar with Flickr? Okay, the image storing yeah. social media site. So Flickr has an API that you can use to get images from their feed. And the API uses JSON or jQuery. So let's uh, create a page to do the following. We're going to query Flickr for, we're going to use the Flickr API and query Flickr for the newest and latest uh, images that came into the Flickr feed, uh, for example, with birds. And we can change the text to something else, okay? So that's what we're going to create right now. And if we have time, uh, then we're going to decide if we're going to call to the other JSON example from scratch or just maybe review. I think maybe we'll just end up reviewing the code. But this one, let's hand code it together, please. So save as. Well, you can, uh, let's see, this will be a Flickr, ex.html. Okay, so this will be Flickr API test. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to add um, a little bit of CSS here for our container. We're going to have a div container. Just a couple of lines, margin auto to center it on the page and padding five pixels. <coughs> All right, the next thing we need to do is grab jQuery. Yeah, definitely, it, has to, it will go in the body, uh, but first, before we get to the body, um, wait, sorry, I have to close the head, here we go. So it's going to go uh, in the head. So jQuery library, TDN. You can grab the 3x version. Yeah, yeah. So if you're linking to it, you always use the minified. And in fact, is there any other one here? No, they're all minified, right? Yeah. Sure. So as I was, I think I was talking about this earlier, um, if this is posted on Google hosted libraries, this means we're going to assume it's a stable library. It's not just completely problem free for some methods, the implementation between two and three might differ and depending on what you use, you may need to research the changes, but for our purpose, I think it will be okay, right? If our methods work, then the methods were implemented in the same in the three X as they are in the two X. It will take a while actually to go and research 3x what changes can be made. Okay, before we add the JavaScript here, let's add the element so we know what we're referring to. So I'll go in the body and then working with get JSON data. And a div with the ID of container. 
And that's where our content is going to go. And also, sorry, uh, also in the body, we're going to create a button. And click. It's going to equal to get JSON data. Load Flickr images. Okay, so that's where we are. And our button, of course, doesn't do anything, but that's our setup in HTML. And now let's go back to the script. And after jQuery library, we're going to add our script for our custom code. And again, this can go on a different page or not. So we're going to create the function, the event handler function from the button, right? We just said here on click call the get JSON data function. So let's call this function a get JSON data. We're going to have a variable clicker API is equal to and uh, I'm sure we're going to make typos if we Try typing this. So go to our week seven. And in week seven, there is the code. Yeah, let me let me do this actually. Let me just do a code share, guys. That's, I like using this code share. Hang on. I'll, I'll culture it for you and just copy it and paste it in your in your code. Okay. Done this earlier, sorry. So Flickr API. I guess I could have just posted the link here. But anyway, go to the code share and copy the URL, please. I put it in, co in uh, coach, uh, where oh, is it? In, yeah, it's always in this week's modules. It's called Flickr API is the name of it. I did that too, actually. Yeah, I, I know this was a, an unnecessary step. It wasn't optimal, but that's what I did. Anyway, what you need to end up with is the Flickr API. So let's pause here while you're setting up and take a look at the documentation for Flickr API. Um, is there a problem? No, no, I just got to that. And so I got my code. So there is the Flipper developer garden, and this is where you can get um, information about how to use the API. I actually have a, here's what, let's go ahead and finish our example and I actually have a slide, I actually made some slides about it because it's hard to find the information. So if you're interested, I can show you afterwards.
All right. And then semicolon. Okay, so the Flickr API is going to equal to the URL to the Flickr API. And then we're going to say dollar, uh, sorry, um, jQuery dot get JSON. And now you know what it means, right? And then we're going to pass some arguments here. So we're going to say Flickr API is the first argument. This is dot big data. And then comma, uh, square, sorry, curly braces. And so these are some optional tags. So I'm going to say tags. And I, I want birds. You can, it can be anything. So start with birds. Tag mode. Any. Format. Uh, sorry, any is also a string. And format JSON. And then succeed it. So we're going to create a function, succeed it which will take in the result. And then dollar sign dot each result dot items function of I and item. And then dollar sign image dot attribute source item dot media dot m append to yep. Yeah. After tag mode, after any, is that a comma or a semicolon? Tag mode up here. That should be a comma. Thank you. That should be a comma. And then um, append to, and we're going to append it to the container div which we created. And we're going to say if i is equal to five. Return false. So what we did here is um, we're setting how many images we want returned. And we can change this, but right now it's set to five. OK, and so then we need to close. The function here. And we need to also close the outer function. I think I have an extra one actually. No, no, this is for the. Okay, so this is all in the JSON data. And we're also going to create a function fail. If we have a fail, we're going to alert the error. Close the script, close the head. Let me test this real quick. Result is not defined. On what line was that? Let's see here. Can you save? Yeah. 
result. Oh, I have a for all. Alright, so it's working. Okay, so this code works. So go ahead and finish it and then test it and we can talk about it to make sure that you understand what's going on. But this is one application of uh, JSON with in conjunction with the Flickr API. And while you're doing this, let me see if I can find some more documentation on the Flickr API. Uh, I had put a semicolon after tag mode up here, but these are all argument lists, so it should be a comma. Top Wait, uh, what line? Yeah, this is a capital E on the error. Correct. So, um, Okay. All right, so assuming that you probably got this working by now, I want to show you again more specifically the asynchronous part of it. So um, you can load the images based on the tag. And so birds are pretty popular, so people are probably constantly adding more. So now it's going to load again. And in this case, they were, I guess, they were the same. But if you wait a little bit, it's going to pull in real time the latest five images from Flickr with this particular tag. And um, I had a typo after result. I had a underscore there. Yeah, that was not intentional. So you can change this from birds to something else and see what comes up in real time. I don't know. I mean, okay, I'll take a look. And so again, this is pulling data in real time from Flickr, and I changed the tag to uh, cats, of course, and uh, here are updated cats. And if someone updated a new image right now with a idea of, with a tag cats, it would show here. For now, they're all the same because you know, the person, nobody, nobody uploaded any cats on Flickr at this point. But if we wait five minutes, maybe, maybe, you upload your new cat. maybe I need to do that. <laughs> That's right. My fourth cat. All right, let me take a look around to see. Who has a question for me? No, I think I'm assuming there's something off on that. You see, you know what we have in there, Eric? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
So you can play around a little bit. You can change. Well, some things you can change are um, the tags. So you can get a different tag here instead of birds or cats. And you can change how many images you want displayed. Right? You can, if I change here to three instead of five, um, then I'm going to get three cats. Yeah, there's the idea. Okay. Sure. I just wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to see it first. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I move it down a little bit. I move it down a little bit for a second. Yeah. What? Looks right. Oh, did that close? Yeah, so I don't tell you that I share it because I wanted to do it with me, but it's always pretty much shared, so it's in the okay, code. Cool. So the final code there. And code then code. it's uh, right there. Okay, perfect. So just if you just copy this, it should work. Yeah, just you can run it from there. It's, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the code and let me show you the Flickr API. It um, looks like the, the interface has changed, but they have this thing called API Garden and uh, it was very hard to get documentation out of it. I, so I thought I would just put some together. But so they have different services besides the one we're using. So you can go, you know, to the services in API. And so they have different public feeds, including public video, um, Favorites, group pools. Um, so you can actually work with all these services in the same way as we did with our particular uh, one with the images. Does this make sense? Right. And then this is the URL for retrieving a public photo stream. So this should match, I think. Does it match ours to a certain extent? And then these are some common query parameters, right? So we use the, the URL for retrieving the photo stream and the parameters we used were tags. So we say, right? Right, right. But we use the tag and the tag mode controls whether the return items must match all of the tags specified or any tags specified. I actually don't know. What is the difference between all and any in this case? But but it's there. Um, then the format, the language, 
and JSON callback is optional. Unless the return format is JSONP, then this parameter must be called as JSON callback. All right. So this is the documentation for the API that we used from the Flickr side, but we also used get JSON. So this was the method we used from jQuery that allowed us to work with AJ with the JSON object. And um, get JSON. We can look at it here. Okay, so what does this method do? It gets JSON data using an AJAX request and outputs the result. Now, when you read this sentence, after we talk about it today, do, does this make sense, right? Now you know what that means, hopefully. And when we say we use an AJAX request, what does that mean more specifically? Right, it's going to be asynchronous, right? It will not override the page. Okay, so here is the syntax, and um, that's what we did in our example. We used dollar, um, dollar sign to indicate that this is jQuery. We selected the method, uh, sorry, the, the element, which was the container in our case, the div where we put in the output, and we call the method get JSON. And now, interesting, what are the arguments you have to pass or you must or optional ones. You have to pass the URL, which is required, specifies the URL to send the request to. Okay, so we send the request where? Sean, can you read this line or someone else? The URL is the Flickr API, All right? Does this make sense? So we set up a variable Flickr API with the oh, URL, yeah. and so that's what we are saying. We're saying go there for the request, go to Flickr to send the request. And then optional data, specify data to be sent to the server. Do we have optional data? We do. The tags are optional data, right? This guy's here. And then the success, which is optional, specifies the function to run if the request succeeds. Um, and then it has some additional parameters, data, status, and XHR contains the object. So we set here, we have a succeeded function, and we want you to run it if we have a success, right? And what does this function do? The succeeded is going to take the result, and then it's going to dot each, so we have a list. So we're going to iterate through the list of results uh, of items. And then we're going to have a function with the index and the item. And then for each item, we're essentially constructing an image, right? We're constructing the tag. And then the attribute is going to be the, the source of the image. And then the, I try to look up media.m, and I actually don't know what M stands for in the medium types. I don't know if any of you print people maybe know about this, but it's not screen. It's not, I don't know what it is, but M. Um, and then append this result of the image to the container, right? And if we have three images, return false. So that means it's going to stop after three or after five. And then we have a fail image, sorry, fail method, where if we get a failure, we're going to alert to the user there is an error. That's not the best way to handle it, but at least it does indicate that there is a failure. And so this is the, well, if it's a fail, it will not be 200, it will be some other code, maybe 404 or something else. Uh, let me show you one other thing real quick. I have a link here, we just didn't get to it. Um, I want to show you the XML HTTP request object, which is at the bottom of all this. Um, here are the codes, let's see. So 
So it returns, you can also, by the way, check on the ready state. And you only want to proceed if the ready state is four, but it also returns the status number. So um, let's see if I can find this. <coughs> okay, so here is the list. So 200 is okay, as we know. I know you all know 404, the server not found, but it could be internal error and so on, right? Forbidden and on and on. So in all these cases, you will not, you should not proceed, it's going to be considered failure. The only one that, that is considered success is um, 200, okay. Okay, does this make sense? Okay. All right, I'm going to take, somebody's nodding their head, so. Makes sense to me. All right, yeah. good. Okay, so we don't really have time to do the other example by hand because it's pretty tedious, but I'd like to show you it. We did the easier example, which uses jQuery. So let me show you one other example, uh, just to review the code here on the website of the book. They have a good example. Um, we're going to look at loading JSON with Ajax, okay? So basically those, um, in this example, the times, dates, and images for these tour, I guess, tour events come from a JSON object, okay? And they're loaded in real time. If you look at the, that's not static page displaying it, it actually loads it from JSON, right? So let's look at the code and then I'll let you um, maybe do a little bit of lab time if we can. Um, I need to show you what I'm looking for is the JSON file. So let's see here. Okay, I hit download or upload it rather the starter code for us to code this, but it's not going to happen, but I can show you the JSON file here. So um, that you can see what it looks like. Where is that? Here we go. Okay. All right, so there is a data folder, and then in the data folder, there is a file called data.json. So let's look at that with brackets. You should be able to open it. And so as you can see, it has exactly, it has the object with the three events that we saw loaded with the location, date, and then the map. And the map is stored on the server. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, the map, the map gets is available here as well, but it would be start on the server if you were looking at the example. And then, where is this? Give too many tab, tabs open. Okay, so we want the one with JSON. So let's look at the HTML. So look, is the same as with our example with the Flickr API. The only thing it has is just the content. It has a section element where with the idea of content and that's all there is, there's nothing else. So everything else comes from the JavaScript through calling um, Ajax to work with the um, JSON object. And this is hard to read here, so I'm going to pull it down and open it in a colored here, I guess.
Okay, so we have some color coding here. Okay, so we have our XML HTTP request object that I just showed you. So we create the object on line five. And then we prepare the request by calling the open method. We say use the get data data.json. That's what we just looked at in this file, right? And then true for asynchronous. And then send the request. And once the request arrives, you're going to use the XHR, the XML HTTP request object on load function. And then you're going to parse the JSON, right? And now we know what that means. Sha, do you remember why we have to parse it or anyone? It needs to be an object format. It used to be an object the format. JSON is just in the uh, text. keys and values, yeah. Right. So it comes in as plain text, so we need to convert, parse it into a JavaScript object. And that's line um, 10. So here, this is commented out, but um, and we only do this if the status equals 200, which is the status that is OK, things went fine. And then the tedious part is that you have to build up a string with the new content. And so you start with an empty variable, and then you loop through the yeah. object, which is you know with the, using the length of the object. But then you have to create all these tags and then essentially construct the page that we saw with the images and everything else. And then after you construct it, you're going to post the new content to the element with idea of content within the HTML. Um, and once you do this, then it's going to display the JSON, these guys here, right? So we constructed essentially these three with HTML, and then we put them with the inner HTML into the content, into the section with idea of content, right? What would be the point of an LA if we just have in CSS and help pictures? Well, it's not dynamic, right? If you want to get it from to display dynamically, um, then you have to use JSON. And maybe, you know, this is an example with three, but you probably have a big data set, right? And you can query, so you can send the question to the through the uh, through the HTTP XML HTTP request. I wanted to return only the ones with right with a certain area. Right. Yeah, this is just a very um, simple example because it's already not simple as it is. But you can scale it up, and hopefully, you can see how it's useful. So that's what I had planned for us today. And um, I'll give you a lot of time for the rest of the class, although um, it's not much time left. And then on Thursday, we're going to do a brief introduction into AngularJS. And that will be the last, <laughs> the last lecture. Oh, I don't have a question. All right. So the, um, the flicker thing is kind of an example. Like, the flicker thing?